pivotal game in the 35 and over Cactus Division. As we're coming to you from Tempe Diablo Stadium, the winter home of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. But today it's home to the 35th annual Men's Senior Baseball League World Series. As the Minoka Blues led by the Mets, Lars Larson on the left, and John Hamill on the right, represent the Chicago Cyclone. Well, for Minoka, they are one win, two losses, and a tie. All right, welcome back to Tempe Diablo Stadium. The Chicago Cyclones will be sending out right-hander Tony Feo. And for the Minoka Grays, they will counter with Billy Diaz. And taking the field for the first time here today, the home team, the Chicago Cyclones. And they're led by their manager, John Hamm. Not the actor, John Hamm, the better-looking one. And you're getting a look at today's starting pitcher, the right-hander, Tony Field. And hoping to stop this vaunted team, this vaunted lineup here of Lars Larson, the manager of the Minoka Grays. That is not Lars. That is the third base coach here for the Grays, and a very pivotal game for them. One win, two loss, and a tie. And the Cyclones told me they were one and three. There is a lot of rain. If you look, I don't know if we can get a shot of it. Out beyond Tempe, like Scottsdale, is really getting hammered right now. There's a good look at it. There is a 50 to 40 to 50 percent chance of rain. For the next, uh, I would say, well, we're starting here at 12.30 or 12.34 right now. And so we probably got another 45 minutes to an hour of a threat of rain. Beyond that, it should be just pretty much overcast skies, though right now the sun has peaked out just a little bit. Well, the dimensions here at the ballpark, 340 down the left field line, the gaps Enormous, over 400 feet, 420 to center field and down the right field line, 360. It was built in 1969 for the expansion Seattle Pilots. And so we are set to go here, MSBL World Series action. Dan Skog will be the leadoff hitter for the Grays, and he's getting ready to dig right in. So Skog's deleted off. And the first pitch at 12.35 is ball one, and this game is underway. Our game time temperature, 59 degrees. Strike called, that evens the count on Skog at one ball and one strike. Skog, Olsen, and Gonzalez, Nick Larson to follow, and that hitting. So they get the leadoff hitter aboard here and a good start. Next up is going to be Joey Olsen. So the leadoff hitter is aboard. Hit by a pitch by Tony Field, and now the next batter grounds one to the shortstop. He bobbles. He'll get the lead runner on a bang-bang play, and there's one down. Now let's look at that one again. Let's see if he got him at second base. It was very close. 
And you be the judge. So the fielder's choice, and that's the first out of the inning and the first out of the ball game. Now, one of the top hitters on the field in Alex Gonzalez. No score top of the first inning. And the runner started to go, and the pitch is taken inside ball one. Nick Larson is on deck for the Grays against the right-hander Tony Field. There goes the runner. Pitch is taken for a ball, and the throw down to second is not going to be in time. A stolen base for Joey Olson. Two balls and no strikes on the third place hitter. And Gonzalez takes a strike. Well, this has been the worst day we have had weather-wise for the entire tournament. That's chop foul along the third base dugout occupied by the Minoka Grays. So the count evens at two balls and two strikes. With a runner at second base and one man out. And the 2-2 pitch to Gonzalez. In the dirt, full count. Nick Larson hoping to get a chance to drive in a run. And you got a runner at second base and one man out. Gonzalez has run the count to three balls and two strikes. And he swings and hits one in the air to center field. And this ball is going to be caught. And the advancement of the runner, and he is going to be in. It gets away, but not far enough for him to score. And so there's two down here in the inning. Now Larson, swing and a miss at the first offering from Tony Field. No balls and one strike. You got a runner at third and two out here in the top of the first inning. Minoka batting. And a swing and a foul, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes on their cleanup hitter, Nick Larson. Well, it's good to see that the sun is out. And the 0-2 pitch is bounced up the middle where the shortstop knocks it down and will throw. No, it was dropped by the first baseman, and the run will score. And just like that, the Grays lead it one to nothing. That'll be an error on the first baseman. As Olsen scores from third base, and it's one nothing. Runner goes, ground ball down to third, gobbled up there nicely. And the throw across will retire the side. But Minoka gets an unearned run on an error by the first baseman of the Chicago Cyclones. And after a half an inning of play, disregard the scoreboard. It's one nothing. the Grays on top in a pivotal 35 and over Cactus Division play. You're getting a look at the right-hander, Billy Diaz, getting the start here for Lars Larson's Minoka Grays, a team 1-2-1. One, and one. Chicago, their opponent here today, 1-3 and three by record. Chicago has to win out, and that might be the scenario here if Minoka out of Minnesota is going to make the playoffs here in 2022. It'll be Colin Jager and Camacho, the first three here for Chicago. Uh, 
First pitch, and it's taken outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Swing and a miss. Alex Collins comes up empty-handed, and it's quickly one ball and two strikes against Billy Diaz. Bottom half of the first inning. And his ball is slapped to third, cut off there. Nice play, and a quick throw to first in time, one down. Nice defensive play by the Grays' third baseman. As you look at it again on the replay, and there's one down here in the home half of the first inning. Bill Yeager will square to bun and take the fastball high for ball one. So again, a very pivotal game in this 35 Cactus Division as the count evens one ball and one strike on the speedy Bill Yeager. Bottom half of the first inning with one out. And that one missed two balls and one strike. Well, the sun has come out here at Tempe Diablo Stadium, and hopefully it'll be a nice afternoon for baseball. Bouncing ball down the first. It's foul. Rody at first base getting the start. Now we didn't get the defensive alignment. Lars said he's going to be changing it so much. It probably could change from inning to inning. Swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout, and that's out number two. That'll bring up third place hitter Edgar Camacho. With Alex Drennan hoping for a chance on deck. So there's two out here in the home half of the first inning. One zero pitch, swing and a foul. Got a piece of the catcher, maybe a little bit of the umpire, and the count is even at one ball, one strike. So Billy Diaz trying to work a perfect first inning. Delivers a strike, and he's a pitch and an out away from a perfect first inning. He winds, kicks, and deals a two-strike pitch, and it's way outside, two and two. Two-two. And strike three called. He got him on an inside fastball to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. And, well, we played one from Tempe Diablo Stadium. It's the Grays one and the Cyclones nothing. All right, welcome back to Tempe Diablo Stadium as we get set for inning number two. Jeff Lowry with you on the play-by-play -play network. Jeff Ewer will start things off, and the first pitch delivered, and a bouncing ball that took a really bad hop 
on the second baseman and goes out into right field for a hit. Let's look at that bad hop once again. Boy, I tell you, have you ever seen a bad hop like that before? So Rody, the batter, batting for the first time here in the top of the second and a double play ball if they can turn it. Second one, throw it on the first, and they do. Well, a fine job by the Cyclones defense, a 4-6-3 double play. All started by DeBaker at second base. And so there's two down here in the inning. And now the two out hitter with nobody on base. It's going to be A.J. Nunez. Good all-around player right here. One of the leaders on the team and the first Second pitch is in there for a strike, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes. We're in the top of the second inning. And the quick working Tony Field missed outside. One ball, two strikes. He kicks and deals, and the curve is popped up. First base side, the first baseman over, has room, and somehow he made the catch, and that'll retire the side. Nice play by Jeff Melcher, and we have played an inning and a half of baseball from Tempe Diablo Stadium. one nothing Grays over the Cyclones. All right, welcome back. Tempe, Arizona. Get a look at some of the downtown area after we had a, a just kind of a, a light shower. Uh, it was more of a, a spit more than a shower. And so fortunately, uh, the sun had come out, and now we're ready to play baseball. We're in the home half of the second inning. The Grays got an unearned run in the first inning. It'll be Alex Drennan to start things off, and the right-hander will take under the knees ball one, second inning of work for Billy Diaz, a starting pitcher here today for Lars Larson and his Minoka Grays. One ball, two balls, and no strikes on the right-handed hitter. Four, five, and six coming up here for the Cyclones. And quickly behind at three balls and no strikes. Dan Scog, a leadoff hit batsman, a fielder's choice, a fly ball to center. There's a hit batsman. It was ball four anyway. So they have the leadoff hitter aboard. And then scoring on the error on a drop ball from the shortstop. And Larson reached safely, and that drove in the run. So the tying run is aboard for the Chicago Cyclones, and the first pitch is just off the outside corner to second baseman Jacob DeBaker. And a strike, and it's one and one. On a cool day, probably, well, this is the coldest day that we have had in the tournament this year. That's out of play, and that'll run the count to one ball and two strikes on the second baseman. He does a nice job in the field. One of the leaders out there. They turned a nifty 4-6-3 double play in the top of this second inning. 
The one-two pitch from Diaz and a little defensive swing, and he just got a piece of it and sends it down the right field line, a foul ball. Leadoff hitter was hit by a pitch. And the one-two pitch to Jason DeBaker. Curve swung on and missed, a third strikeout of the day. And there's one down here in the inning. Third strikeout for Billy Diaz. Thomas Ramos and a tapper back to the mound. He'll take the safe out at first. And he probably would have had a good shot at him at second base. But his momentum was taking him to the bag, and, you know, I think that's a very smart play. Yes, I think he would have thrown him out, but the safe play, get that out. It's a close game at one to nothing. Can't afford to, you know, he would have had to spin around and then set himself and try to make the perfect play. So they got a runner in scoring position and a swing and a foul tip into the catcher's mitt by Tony Feo. So there's two down here in the bottom half of inning number two. Jeff Lowry with you, APM Video Sports. On a great day for baseball. We had a little rain a little bit earlier today, but things looking pretty good so far. Hopefully it'll stay away from us. And the 0-2 pitch is too high. Two balls. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch. And a line drive and a diving play at shortstop to retire the side. How about that? Let's check it again on our replay. And a sensational play by Jeff Amon, um, a man, excuse me. And here it is, and Jeff with a diving play and might possibly be our Marucci big play of the day. So at the end of two, it's still one to nothing Grays. This is APMVideo.com. Michael Wayrock starts things off here for the Grays in the top half of the third inning. And here's a shot in the center field, a base hit. So Wayrock, a good start here in the top of the third inning for the Grays. And it looks like he's going to get a courtesy runner. Hit number two for the Minoka Grays. Trying to improve and get to the 500 mark if they can hold on and get a victory here against Chicago. The first pitch is outside ball one to Matt Carter. Top of the third inning. Quick throw over to first. Runner had to dive back in. As you get a look at the left-handed hitting, Matt Carter. And a chopper foul, and that will make the count one ball, one strike. Third inning of work for the right-handed starter for Chicago as the runner goes, and a throw down on a stolen base attempt not in time. 
So the Grays are off and running here. A runner in scoring position and a 1-2 count coming up. That is the second stolen base of the day for Minoka. And now Matt Carter's responsibility is to, at minimal, get him over to third. And instead, he swings and misses at a pitch that might have been out of the strike zone, and there's one down. Well, he came back with the high cheese, and Carter trying to make something out of nothing that time, and he goes down on strikes. That is the first strikeout of the day for Tony Field. So one out here in the top of the third inning. And this ball is hit in the air to medium depth right field and is going to be playable. The runner tags and moves all the way to third base. So there's two down here in the top of the third inning. But now you got a runner 90 feet away from scoring position. So Von Ruden flies out, and we go back to the top of the order in Dan Skog. Two out, runner at third. Yeah, they tried to do the, I don't know if they were trying to do an appeal play, ask for an appeal. Not sure what was going on and why we're stopping play all of a sudden. Here in the top of the third inning, Minoka, the visiting team. At the plate, leading it one to nothing, scored an unearned run in the top of the first inning. Now Dan takes a fastball high and away, ball one. Right-hander kicks and deals, and that's going to be a called strike, and that will even the count at one ball and one strike. Two out runner at third. And Skog hits a high fly ball in the shallow left field. It's a long run and a nice running catch. That'll save a run and end the inning. Let's check it one more time because that was a fine running catch to save the day here for the Chicago Cyclone. And that'll take us to the home half of the third inning with Minoka leading Chicago one. We're getting a live shot at downtown Tempe as we welcome you back into Tempe Diablo Stadium and the 35th annual MSBL World Series. As we head now to the bottom half of the third inning, Tony Arbogast will start things off for the Cyclones. Arbogast, Ona, and Priolo will be the first three here for John Hamm, the manager of this Cyclones team. And it's one ball and two strikes on the hard-hitting left-hand hitter. Bottom half of the third inning. Seeing a good pitcher's duel between Billy Diaz and Tony Field, a pair of right-handers. And that one way outside to even the count at two balls and two strikes. And that's grounded foul. Well, it's always important to get that leadoff hitter aboard. Or in this case with Minoka, retiring that leadoff hitter. He fouls it off, stays alive. Two balls, two strikes to the first batter here in the home half of the third inning. Right-hander kicks and deals another two-strike pitch, and he struck him out swinging. 
And the throw will go on to first to complete the double play. And there is one down here in the bottom half of the third. The ball's in one strike to Joe Ona. Four strikeouts for Billy Diaz already. A close-up look at Billy Diaz, today's starting pitcher. He winds, kicks, and delivers the 0-1 pitch, high and tight, a little chin music to even the count at one ball and one strike. So it's a ball and two strikes on Joe Ona. <clears throat> Looking for his fifth punch out of the day is Billy Diaz. Instead, this ball is hit up the middle and in the center field for a hit. And get a look at that line drive base hit as Priolo gets set to come back into the batter's box. A one out single, and that is the first hit of the ball game. Here's a drive out into left center field and playable for out number two. So a nice running catch out there in left field for the Grays. The Grays left fielder. And now Lee Smith Jr. No, this is not any relation to the Hall of Famer Lee Smith. So there's two out here in the home half of the third. And a fly ball foul and out of play, and it's nothing in one. Well, the two teams, uh, well, you would expect this in a one nothing game, collectively 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position so far. That's a strike. And Lee Smith is down. No balls, two strikes with two out. Billy Diaz, and he left it a little low, 1 and 2, looking for his fifth punch out of the day. Two out in the bottom half of the third. An unearned run in the top of the first inning for Minoka. And a bouncing ball to the shortstop. He'll get the convenient hop and take it to the bag himself, and that'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, one left. At the end of three, it's the Grays one, the Cyclones nothing. This is the 35th annual Men's Senior Baseball League's World Series on APM Video Sports. And we'll have more from Tempe Diablo Stadium in just a moment.
Top of the fourth inning. And the first pitch is ball one. Joey Olson, who has scored the game's only run back in the first inning when he scored from third base on a ground ball by Nick Larson. The shortstop's throw was in time, but the first baseman just dropped the ball, and that's the only run we've seen here in this 35 Cactus division. A pivotal game for both teams. So it'll be the 2, 3, and 4 for Lars Larson's Minoka Grays, Olsen, Gonzalez, and Nick Larson. And a jam shot, and he ups it to center, and, well, the center fielder almost made a spectacular play. And Olsen's going to be held to a long single. Look at it again. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a valiant effort by the Chicago center fielder. As we check it on the replay. So a leadoff single here. Hit number three for the Minoka Grays, Alex Gonzalez 0 for 1. Fastball in there, a cold strike. No balls and one strike on Gonzalez. With a runner at first, nobody out here in the top of the fourth. The check of the runner, and Tony Field will throw over that way. And another throw over to first, and the runner is back in safely. Ready with the 0-1 pitch. And here's a little looper. Back a second. That's going to drop in for a base hit. The runner was going, and he is going to make it to third. So the first two have reached here for the Grays against starting pitcher Tony Field. And now the cleanup hitter is going to be Nick Larson, who is 0 for 1. Quick meeting of the minds, catcher and pitcher. So the first two are aboard here in the top of the fourth inning. Runners are at first and third. And Larson with a chance to come up with a big RBI here and a 1-0 lead for Minoka as they bat here in the top of the fourth. Runner is going, and they are going to throw all the way down and nearly threw it out into center field. I think that was one of those situations where the catcher kind of got in between, you know. Wasn't really sure if he wanted to make a play at second base. So now second and third, ducks on the pond for Nick Larson. And he squibs one foul, and that evens the count at one ball and one strike. Gonzalez with the stolen base. That is the third stolen base of the day. Three for three for the Grays. As they bat here in the top of the fourth, leading it one to nothing. Second and third, nobody out. And it's low, two and one. Now the infield on the left side is playing even with the bag and just off the grass. Maybe a step. Well, now the third baseman is backed up. To the, and even with the bag, and it's smashed to the right side, and they will have to go to first with it, and the run will score. That'll make it a 2 nothing game for the Grays. RBI for Larson, and Olsen has scored both, game, both runs in this contest. So Larson will be credited with an RBI. And 
And here's a chopper to the shortstop. He charges and will let the run score, and they will get the out. And there's two down here in the top of the fourth. So make it a three to nothing ball game in favor of the Grays. Couple of runs, the two leadoff hits, and a couple of, well, a stolen base. And good base running has paved the way to a three run lead here in the top of the fourth inning for Minoka. And that one's rifled into the seats, foul ball. So Jack Nelson will be credited with an RBI. Olsen and Gonzalez have scored. Larson and Nelson with RBIs, and this one's fouled back, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes on Jeff Hewer, who had a base hit. Four hits in total now, and the next delivery is a line shot out in the right field. He hit it well, and that ball's going to get by the right fielder. It's going all the way to the warning track or near the track, and now coming all the way to third is Hewer, and he's got a triple with two out. Well, he gave that ball a ride, no question about it. So a two-out triple extends the top of the fourth inning. <laughs> Dustin Rohde fouls one off. No balls and one strike on Dustin. He had a, well, he was the one that hit into that 4-6-3 double play back in the second inning. So you got a runner at third, two out, three nothing. Grays lead it, and here's a line drive that the second baseman, DeBaker, will make a nice play on, and maybe even a nicer play by Ramos at first base to retire the side on a throw that was a little wide. But a successful inning for the Grays. Two runs. They lead three to nothing. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning from Tempe Diablo Stadium. He hits one well into left center field, and the center field dives and comes up empty-handed, and three runs are going to score. Billy Diaz now in his fourth inning of work as we go to the bottom half of inning number four, and he has punched out four guys so far as we get set for the Chicago Cyclones offense. Let's try to get back into this ball game. They trail three to nothing. They're in a definitely, well, both teams, I think, are kind of in a must-win situation if they want to get into the playoffs. So J.D. will start it off, Panelago. Left-handed hitter, ball one, one ball, no strikes. And it's chop foul, that'll even the count. At one ball and one strike on this date in Major League Baseball history, 1965. No, I was not born then. Sandy Koufax 
who had a 26 and 8 record and a 173 ERA and a record shattering 382 strikeouts as the count goes to 1 and 2 on Panaloga and He was awarded the Cy Young in a unanimous vote, and that was two years before they started awarding it to pitchers in both leagues. Two balls, two strikes on Panelago. J.D. leading things off here in the home half of the fourth inning. You're watching APMVideo.com in the 2-2. And a chopper up along the first baseline. It will not get through the first baseman, and Rody takes it to the bag one down. Seven out of the last eight have been set down by Billy Diaz. First pitch strike to Jeff Melcher, the first baseman. Bottom half of the fourth inning, one out. Strike called, good pitch. I don't know if that was a cut fastball or a slider, and it's quickly... No balls and two strikes on Jeff Melcher, the final hitter in the order for John Hamm. The 0 2 pitch again. And a high fly ball out in the center field. This is playable. And off the glove of the center fielder. And here comes the runner to second. And the throw will not be in time. Well, that'll be a double for Jeff Melcher. Though I think, I'm sure that the gray center fielder would agree that he should have had it. So a two-base hit. The second hit of the ball game here for the Chicago Cyclones. A scratch double, that's what they used to call it in the old days. And now Alex Collins. Now actually John Hamm has added himself to the bottom of the order. Uh, yes, sir. Nice guy, had, no, did a, had a chance to cover one of these Cyclone games I think a couple of years ago. And just a really nice guy, guy loves the game of baseball and he's up there Trying to get a run in. They have been shut out over the first three-plus innings. And a wave and a miss at a slider down and away, and it's two balls and one strike on John Hamm. Runner at second with one out. Cyclones 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Hamm trying to change that right here. And he's tardy on the pitch, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Panelago, a ground out to first. Melcher doubles to center. And a 2 2 to John Hamm. Inside, 3 and 2. Fourth inning of work for right hander Billy Diaz. And he slaps one to the right side. At least that gets the runner over, and there is two down. So a routine play at second base. Good job by the Grays defense. Two down here in the inning. We go back to the top of the order and Alex Collins. Well, on this day in baseball history, 1989, Lou Pinella was named manager of the Cincinnati Reds after Pete Rose was banned for betting on baseball and even more importantly, banning uh, betting on his own team. 
Of course, one of the great controversies of all time, the 0-2 to Collins, and he lifts one in the air, center field, base hit. This game now is a two-run affair. So a dump single out there in center field by Alex Collins plates their first run, and it's 3-1 to one now. As the Minoka team giving up their first run of the contest. A couple of hits here in the fourth inning. They have had three all together. Here's a pop-up, and this one down the line, foul ball. The hit by Alex Collins, the first hit of the ball game with runners in scoring position. Cyclones, one for five. And 0 for four is the gray. And now they're going to have a runner in scoring position with that wild pitch. Diaz in his fourth inning of work. Scattering three hits and one earned run. The 0-2 pitch. Strike three called. He got him. Well, that's one and two. One and two. My bad. One ball, two strikes. Billy Yeager, second place hitter in the lineup. And he slaps one down the left field line. Long run and a sliding catch. How about that? A tremendous play, and that'll retire the side. As we look at it again on the replay, and a tremendous sliding catch out there by Michael Wayrock. Minoka still leads it 3-1 to one as we head to the 5th. This is the 35th annual MSBL World Series. Okay, fifth inning of work for starter Tony Field. We got a good ball game here. It's 3-1 to one in favor of the Grays. They got out to a 1-0 lead in the first, added two more in the fourth. A.J. Nunez will start things off here, home half of the fifth inning for the Grays.
Tony Fio, five innings, two earned runs. Two of the three runs are earned as A.J. Nunez. Tony Fio on the mound. And the one-two pitch to A.J. Nunez leading off the home half of the fifth, and he lays off the pitch. Two balls and two strikes. First batter up here in the home half. And a long belt into deep left field. He hit it well, but the left fielder is there to make the play, and there's one down. So one up and one down for Minoka. And here's the man who made the Marucci play of the day an inning ago, Michael Wayrock. Going up against Tony Fio in his sixth, his fifth inning of work, top of the fifth inning. Three to one, Gray's on top who really need a win. They're in a little better position to make the playoffs than this Chicago team. Popped him up, and a nice sliding catch by Tony Fio. He makes the play, and there's two down. Well, a tremendous play. A couple of nice defensive plays for Chicago to start the top of the fifth inning. And now Matt Carter... Digging in for the second time. Two down. First pitch. That's a called strike. So Tony Field. Dealing to Carter, a strikeout victim his first time up. And he has jumped ahead at no balls and two strikes. Two down. Nobody on here in the top of the fifth inning. And Carter stays alive. Went after a pitch that was out of the strike zone his first time up. It was high. And you wonder if maybe Tony Field will go back upstairs since he had some success the last time against Carter. And he did. He went upstairs and got the strikeout, and that will retire the side. Halfway through... A pivotal game in the 35 and over cactus. You're watching APN and our coverage of the 35th annual MSBL World Series. Three to one grays. We go to the home half of the fifth.
Edgar Camacho will be the first hitter for the Cyclones. They got a run in the bottom half of the fourth inning to cut it to a 3-1 deficit. And the first pitch to Camacho, borderline pitch. Fifth inning of work for the starter, Billy Diaz, the right-hander. A pair of right-handers and a good pitcher's duel here from Tempe Diablo. That's a strike. Ground ball. And just like that, one up and one down. Dan Skog doing the job at shortstop, making the routine plays. That's how you win in the MSBL. Down the left field line and foul. So Alex Drennan giving that ball a ride deep down the left field line. And he's down, no balls, and one strike. So Camacho is out, six to three. One out, nobody on here in the home half of the fifth inning, and that's outside, one and one. Again, Billy Diaz, the starting pitcher here today for Minoka. Four and a third inning, scattering three hits and one earned run. He has struck out five. Actually, I gave him one extra strikeout. He has struck out four and has yet to yield a walk through four and a third innings. And here's a line shot way back in the left center, and this is going to be extra bases. That ball's heading to the Michelob Ultra sign. Here comes the runner to second, and now he's going to be in standing with a three-base hit. So a one-out triple by Alex Dressen. Now bring the tying run to the plate for the Cyclones. Hit number four for the Cyclones. They will concede the out. They will concede the run, I should say. The Grays defense, they will concede the out, a run for the out. Unless the ball's hit probably right at the third baseman. And quickly, nothing and two on Jason DeBaker, the second baseman. And a swing and a miss, and he is going to go down on strikes. That is strikeout number five for Billy Diaz, and now two out in the inning. That's a big out right there. And DeBaker is going to courtesy run at third base. Two down. That'll bring up Tommy Ramos. Two out runner at third. First pitch, ball one. Well, the Cyclones just one for six with runners in scoring position in this game. Billy Diaz needs an out to prevent a run. And here's a chopper up along the first base side, but that's a foul ball. One ball, one strike. Big at bat here 
And Ramos takes just under the knees as the sun peeks out here and shines all across Tempe Diablo Stadium. It's two balls and one strike on Ramos. Two out runner at third. Strike called outside corner, and that evens things up at two balls and two strikes. He's ready with the two-strike pitch. And a tapper to the right side. The second baseman will field throw to Diaz. And apparently he's called him safe and the run is in. So good hustle over there. Ramos getting down the line and the pitcher got over there too late. And it's 3-2 to two here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. So that cuts it to a one-run deficit, and now the go-ahead run comes to the plate and Tony Feo. Credit Ramos with an RBI for Chicago. And it's quickly two balls and no strikes on today's starting pitcher. Billy Diaz might be a little upset with himself that he didn't get over there a lot quicker. And here's a drive into right field, and it's going to hold up and be caught by the right fielder to retire the side. But in the inning, Chicago gets a run, and they trail by one as we head to the top of the sixth inning from Tempe Diablo Stadium. This is APMVideo.com. Well, back here at a very breezy Tempe Diablo Stadium. You can see the wind really whipping the trees out there beyond the center field wall. Von Rudin will start things off as we go to the top of the sixth inning here. And the first pitch is outside ball one, Mark. Flied to right field, his first and only time up back in the third. So a uh, new complexion on this ball game as Chicago has scored two unanswered runs and now have cut the deficit to one at three to two. Top of the sixth. And Mark takes the 2-0 offering inside. Tony Feo in his sixth inning of work. 35 cactus division. And another good pitch. We're seeing a good pitching matchup here. Both, team, both starting pitchers have given up two earned runs so far. And a good job by Von Ruden, Mark Von Ruden, staying alive. Two balls and two strikes to Mark, leading things off here in the top of the sixth. And he slaps this one down to third. It's knocked down. And a throw to first won't be in time. That'll be an error, the second error of the day against the Cyclones defense. Well, you'll take them any way you can. Cyclones have made maybe two Marucci worthy plays of the day. Andrew Padilla added to the bottom of the order. Batting for the first time and he takes the pitch high ball one.
And he had a good cut at that one, but fouls it straight back. A ball is strike to Andrew Padilla, who is just added to the bottom of the order. There goes the runner. Here goes the throw out into center field. And the runner didn't quite see it. Mark didn't see the throw quick enough to advance to the next base. Fourth stolen base of the day. Four for four for the Grays. So now you got a runner in scoring position. Nobody out here in the top of the sixth inning. That one's fouled straight back. The one-two pitch. And Padilla stays alive. Just got a piece of it as he's battling Tony Feo out there. Got a runner at second base. That's outside, two and two. Minoka led at one time three to nothing at the end of three and a half innings, but that lead has been trimmed to one. And that's inside, and now the count has run full on Andrew Padilla, who is batting for the first time in this contest. Tony to the set position, delivers, and this one is hit down the line, and that's out of play. Wow, look at that. I don't know if I've ever seen that here before. That ball rolled up the hill, if you can believe that. So another three ball, two strike count coming up. And he slaps one down to third, this time fielded cleanly and the throw across is in time. So a nice play there. Bill Yeager down at the hot corner taking care of Padilla. And there's one down here in the inning. Dan Skog will dig in for the third time, the leadoff hitter in the lineup here for the Minoka Grays who lead it three to two. Runner at second base. And the Grays still looking for their first hit with runners in scoring position. They're 0 for 5. One out, runner at third. And Leo delivers. It's hammered in the left field, and it's going to bounce in front of the left fielder on one hop. He'll throw the ball back in, and that's going to be a clean single to left field for Dan Skog. And now runners are on the corners. Now Olsen, who has scored two of the three runs here. And there goes the runner, and they'll just throw it back to the pitcher. So five for five in stolen base attempts. Still only one out, but now you got runners at second and third.
And this one hit hard. Knocked down by the second baseman. It'll be an infield hit. Here comes the second run home, and he is going to score. A two-run infield hit by Joey Olson, and it's all of a sudden 5-2 to two Grays. You don't see too many two-run, two-RBI hits in the infield. So now Gonzalez up there with a runner at first, still only one out. That ball was hit really hard and really ate up to Baker and not a whole lot he could do about it. So it's going to be ruled a hit, a two-run single of the infield hit variety. And now one ball and no strikes on Alex Gonzalez. Alex Gonzalez, probably one of the most popular baseball names in the history of the game. And the runner is going. Here's a throw down. This time, though, the throw actually did beat the runner, but it was a little off the line. And six for six now as Olsen is in with his second stolen base of the day. The 1-1, one, one. and it's in the dirt. Olsen holds up. I'll tell you, where would the Grays be without the six stolen bases? I mean, that has factored into some of the scoring here this afternoon from Diablo Stadium. And there goes the runner again. It's grounded to shortstop. you got to be careful. He might try to score. Here comes a throw to the plate, and he is going to be out at the plate. What a great tag by the catcher. And that will retire the side. Here's the play again at home. And a good job of blocking the plate, and that will retire the side and prevents a run. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning here from Diablo Stadium in Tempe, and the Grays lead it by a score of 5-2. to two. Our live coverage of the 2022 MSBL World Series rolls on here from Tempe Diablo Stadium. And we head now to the home half of the sixth inning, a 5-2 lead for the Grays behind some outstanding pitching by Billy Diaz, who's in his sixth inning of work. He's given up two earned runs and five strikeouts. 
And has scattered four hits. Check that five hits. He gave up a run and two hits. An infield hit by Tommy Ramos. And here's a ground ball down to third, and it went right through the legs, and that's going to be an error on the third baseman of the Grays. So the leadoff hitter is aboard for only the second time in the game for the Cyclones. So Tony on with an error, and the next batter swings and lifts one towards the shortstop. Dan's got it, and there's one down. So one pitch, and Joe Ona is retired, six unassisted. Tony Priolo. Up for just the second time in the contest. Runner at first with a short lead. And it's ball one. One ball, no strikes. Tony, a fly out to right field his first time up. You see that short lead by the runner at first. And the fastball is inside. Two balls, no strikes. As we play here in the home half of the sixth inning. It's not a championship. This is actually game five for both of these teams in round-robin play. Now, we have been told earlier today that uh, the rain was going to clear out of here. It's 2 o'clock right now, and right now I can't see the McDowell Mountains beyond the left center field fence. That's in there for a strike. Three and one as Diaz working in his sixth inning of work for the Grays. Needs a strike and did not get one. And that is the first walk issued by Diaz this afternoon. They are one for six with runners in scoring position. And now Lee Smith Jr. batting for the second time. First and second occupied, and only one man out here in the bottom of the sixth inning, and they got the tying run coming to the plate. So Martinez is out to talk to his starting pitcher. Dan Skog will also join in, along with third baseman Matt Carter. Well, he just issued his first walk of the contest. And a line drive out in the left field, base hit. Here comes the runner to third, and he's going to stay right there, and the bases are loaded. So here comes Chicago rallying back with one out. And this is going to prompt a visit to the mound. Well, I can't imagine that he's running out of gas here, but you had the leadoff error, and then they pop up. To the shortstop, he and, and really did a good job on the first two hitters. I think you got to keep him in there as Joey Olson. Maybe just a little pep talk with the bases loaded, the sun coming out, and once again we're in total sunshine. Panelago. Bases loaded. Six hits now for the Chicago Cyclones. And a swing and a foul, and he's down nothing in one. Well, I hate to say it, but this, it, it, this, this storm has really 
has a mind of its own. It's rare that you would see a front coming in from the north. But that is the issue here. There is one out here. Sorry about the scoreboard. Swing and a miss. Nothing and two on J.D. Panalogo. Panalogo, excuse me, who grounded out to first base unassisted back in the fourth inning. Two runs, six hits for Chicago. The 0-2 pitch bounces away, and this is going to allow the run to score, and it's 5-3. to three. That's too bad because you're ahead in the count, and that is one of the dangers of with runners in scoring position, especially at third base, trying to get them to fish for a pitch that's in the dirt. So that runs the count on J.D. at one and two. Second and third occupied, still only one out, and he stays alive. This is a big at bat here. You got the tying run out at second base. The pitch. And he fouls it off to the left side. So we're going to keep a close eye. We've got a bird's eye view up here. Well, the weather, they're just saying partly cloudy or partly sunny. Call it what you will. Sun's back out. Two-strike pitch. He struck him out swinging. What an outstanding job by Diaz. And there's two down. Well, he hung in there after the wild pitch that scored the third run of the game for Chicago. But he's not out of the hot water yet. And now second and third still with two out. And here's Melcher. He had a base hit, his first and only time up back in the fourth inning. He was credited with a double, a scratch double off the glove of the center fielder. Two out, one ball, no strikes to him. Just inside, two and nothing. There is a base open, but you don't really want to keep putting guys on base. The tying run is at second. Swing and a miss. Jeff did not look too good on that swing. Looked like he might have, might need that thing Rob Deere is selling down here to keep your hands on the bat, keep your hands together. And he pops it up, and it's in the sun, and somebody's got to make a play on it. There's two outs. It's going to fall. And runners are going to be at first and third. That is an infield hit, and, well, the sun had just come out, and I think if they... If that ball had been hit, uh, well, maybe five seconds later, that ball probably is caught by the pitcher, but it falls for a hit. So the run will score, and now the tying run 90 feet away at third base. Fastball high, ball one. So a two-run inning has put Chicago right back into the game as the sun is back out and you got a runner at third base. And he missed outside. This is John Hamm batting for the second time. Three balls and no strikes. With runners at first and third. And the ball gets away. Here comes the run home, and this game is tied up. Well, it's been a really tough inning for Diaz and company. And really, he should be out of the inning with no runs. The pop-up should have been caught. Of course, he couldn't see it. And the leadoff hitter reached on an error. So a 5-5 tie in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
And this is the second trip to the mound. And so Diaz's afternoon, at least on the mound, is over. We got a break in the action. We're going to get a new pitcher. And Diaz will give way, and we'll take a quick timeout. Well, he'll get a glad hand from the capacity crowd here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. We're in a 5-5 tie, bottom of the sixth. Two outs in a 5-5 tie. Two runs coming in on wild pitches. Diaz will give way to Alex Gonzalez. And the first pitch is swung on and missed. Alex Collins, the batter, is one for two. RBI single in the fourth. 5-5 tie. Pivotal game. Chicago. And really, I think both teams have to win their next two if they have, well, or their next game. They have to win this one and the next game most likely to make the playoffs. Two strike pitch is fouled up this way, a foul ball. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Way outside, Martinez, a nice job corralling that one. One and two, Gonzalez to Collins. Strike three called, he got him. Painted a blistering fastball on the outside part of the plate, and that'll retire the side. But they get three runs in the inning. And they tie things up. It's a 5-5 tie from Tempe Diablo Stadium. The 35th annual MSBL World Series rolls on as you look at that beautiful pitch to end the sixth inning. Five-five tie. We go to the bottom or the top half of the seventh inning, and the first batter grounds one, a seeing eye base hit in the right field. Good start here for the Grays after get, relinquishing the lead in the home half of the sixth inning. Right. 
So Nick Larson leading things off with a base hit. Runner at first, nobody out. Representing the go-ahead run. And he started to go and thought otherwise. As Nick Larson has a courtesy runner. I didn't catch the number when he walked out here. That is the eighth hit of the ball game for the Minoka Grays here in the top of the seventh. Now the runner goes. He takes ball and the throw, and they are seven for seven. pitch and it's low and inside three balls and no strikes on Jack Nelson after the leadoff single by Nick Larson and he's at second base in scoring position and Tony Tony Feo is now in his seventh inning of work and now the runner is going and no one is at third base Time was apparently not called and safe. Well, you don't see a third baseman just vacate his position like that very often, but that cost him a stolen base. And this one grounded fair down the line. That's going to be extra bases. It's bobbled around out there, but not before a lead off or a no out RBI double off the bat of Jack Nelson. Swing and a miss. Jeff Hewer batting. So the Minoka Grays regain the lead six to five here. Hewer is two for three, a single and a triple. Well, the double by Nelson. As that's outside one and two, the double by Nelson as he stands at second base. The second hit with runners in scoring position this afternoon for Minoka. And the count is now two and two on Jeff Hewer. Dustin Rohde is on deck. Still nobody out here in the top of the seventh inning. And that's up against the screen to the right side. High fly ball, way back in the right field. And this will get the runner to third. So that is the first out of the inning. Next up is Rody. Been playing a lot of first base here today. Of course, Lars Larson told me that he's going to try to get a lot of guys into the game here today. First pitch, check swing, foul, straight back and out of play. Nothing in one. 
Ground ball on a drawn-in infield. They're coming home, and the tag and the out. Outstanding job by the shortstop, Edgar Camacho, who made the play, and that is the second out of the inning. Well, a nice backhanded play by Edgar Camacho, and he threw a perfect strike to his catcher, Alex Drennan. Two downs, six to five. The Grays lead it with A.J. Nunez. And now the Grays two for eight with runners in scoring position. The runner goes, and again, we're going to get a stolen base. That was a little closer. Nine for nine. Nine stolen base attempts, nine successful. And the Grays wanting to add on, get an insurance run. Ground ball up the middle, diving play by the shortstop Camacho. He throws him out at first. How about that defensive play? Watch it again. Another Marucci defensive play by this Cyclones team, and we are heading to the home half of the seventh inning. A one-run lead for the Grays. We'll have more on APN in just a moment. All right, back here at Tempe Diablo Stadium, and now it is starting to hail, if you can believe it. The sun is shining, but we've got tiny droplets of hail that are landing right outside our Tempe Diablo press box here as we go to the home half of the seventh inning, 6-5 grays over the Cyclones. And they are not going to stop play as of right now. I'd rather have this kind of hail dropping than actual raindrops. As Bill Yeager, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. So one down here in the inning, and here is the slick fielding shortstop, Edgar Camacho, who takes ball one. Second inning of work for Gonzalez, and he has struck out the first two that he has faced. As the Grays cling to a one-run lead, and here's a rope past the second baseman, and the good speed by the center fielder. Let's see if they hold him to a long single. He's going for two, and he's got a double. So 
So a one out double by Camacho. So he is aboard. Seventh hit of the day for the Cyclones, and here's Alex Brennan, the cleanup hitter. Well, the hail continues to drop here. If we can get a shot of it or not. One out, tying run at second base here in the seventh inning. Cyclones now officially with eight hits in the ball game. Swing and a miss. It's one and one. I know you can't see it there, but there you go. And it's grounded towards the shortstop. He's got it. Nice job by Dan. Low throw scooped out nicely at first base. So Skog with a nice job at shortstop. And now DeBaker. And he takes ball one. Two out, tying run at third base here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And a chopper foul. The count evens on Jason DeBaker who has been a strikeout in his first two plate appearances. And there is a little front that is coming in, and I wouldn't be too surprised if we don't get some rain. I mean, you, I keep looking at the forecast, and this weather app on my phone, I mean, most of the time it's, it's on. But I'll tell you, if there's any weather, especially out here, it, I don't know. It's saying a very slim chance of rain. But then you look at the clouds that are coming in from the west, and they're a little ominous. Two and two to Jason DeBaker, the second baseman. He struck him out for the third time. Three strikeouts and an inning and a third for Gonzalez, and we're heading to the eighth. Minoka clinging to a one-run lead here. It's the 35th annual Men's Senior Baseball League's World Series. This is APN. Tony Feo is now in his eighth inning of work. I think, I think we have seen really a good pitching matchup here. A lot of the runs, you know, you got some unearned runs in there. You had a few from a wild pitch. But, I mean, 
I think a tip of the cap to Billy Diaz and Tony Feo and obviously Alex Gonzalez. He's come in lights out, inning in a third, three strikeouts. Wayrock. One for two and nearly got hit by a pitch. One ball and no strikes as we go to the top of the eighth inning back here at Tempe Diablo Stadium, the winner home of the Angels. And here's a rocket down the line, and that's just foul. Strike two called. One ball and two strikes on... Michael Wayrock. Well, the temperature has dropped two degrees as that swung on and missed. And that'll be the first punch out, the first out here in the top of the eighth inning. Third strikeout of the game for Tony Feo. Now Curtis Ellison for the first time. Takes the first pitch, the first offering for ball one. And the fastball is high. Temperature has dropped two degrees since our first pitch back at 1235. And we are just about a minute and a half shy of that 1232 hour time frame. Swing and a miss. And it's two balls and two strikes. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Well, Minoka knows they need to win out. I mean, they're one win, two loss, and a tie. The 2 2. And a chopping ball to Edgar, who charges and fires perfectly on the first base. And there is two down. Well, he continues to flash off a very good glove there at shortstop. Here's Edgar. Now Ona. Ona batting with two out here in the top of the eighth inning. In the eighth inning of work for Tony Fail. And that's in there for a cold strike, and it's nothing in one. 35 and over, Cactus Division. And this one is hit high in the air, shallow center. Who wants it? Camacho with a nice running catch. And that'll retire the side. So we're heading to the bottom of the eighth. Chicago clinging to a one-run lead. They've led most of the game. And we'll have more on APN in just a moment.
Alex Gonzalez getting set to go in his third inning of work. Thomas Ramos will be leading things off here. First pitch. I'll tell you, Gonzalez can really bring it. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. A 6-5 lead for the Grays. And this one is fouled out of play. And well, he's one ball and one strike on Ramos, who tied the game with an infield two-run single. Back in the sixth inning. Ramos, Tony failed, and Tony Arbogast. And that is strike three, no, strike two called on the outside corner. He has struck out three of the four that he has faced and did not miss much by that one. A borderline pitch. That evens the count on Ramos at two balls and two strikes. And here's a 2-2. And a bouncing ball to first. Took a big, convenient Sunday hop. One down. Nick Larson. With the put out at first base, and the always important leadoff hitter is retired here. And now the starting pitcher who has went eight innings, Tony Feo, looking for his first hit. He takes outside for ball one. On this day in Major League Baseball history, the Rules Committee, all the way back in 1953, reinstated the 19... I'm sorry, that was in 53. The Rules Committee restores the 1935 sacrifice fly rule, which says a sacrifice fly is not a charged at bat. Two balls and one strike, one out. Gonzalez in his third inning of work, and this one's going to be out of play to even the count of two and two. And a little chopper out in front of the play. Fair ball. Nice play by the catcher, two down. And again, this date in Major League Baseball history, 1982, Pete Vukovic becomes Milwaukee's second consecutive American League Cy Young Award winner as he edges out Hall of Fame great Jim Palmer. Vukovic was 18-6 and six with a 334 ERA for the Brewers in 82. Can you name the guy who won it the year before? Raleigh Fingers. Two out. And a jam shot. That evens the count on Tony at one ball, one strike. Tony has struck out and reached on an error. Two down, bottom of the eighth inning. Game right now. Game time, two hours and five minutes. He struck. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a swing and a miss. One and one. And might have shattered his bat there. And a nice toss over to first. And a good 1-2-3 inning for Gonzalez and company. We go to the ninth. 6-5 to five grays on AP.
Well, I'll tell you, Tony really has pitched an outstanding game here for Chicago. And he is out for the ninth inning, trying to get a complete game. Hope that his team can rally in the bottom of the ninth inning, but they got to take care of business here against the tough Grays. So we go to the top of the ninth inning, and Anthony, or rather Andrew Padilla, will be the first batter. He's down, no balls and a strike. Here's a pop-up out of play. I don't think the catcher's going to – well, he might. Couldn't make it. Two strikes on Padilla. Batting here in the top of the ninth inning. We were tied at five apiece, but for the most part, it has been – Really, the Grays and a swing and a miss. They'll have to complete. Nope, nope, they're going to call him out. So a strikeout to lead things off here in the top of the ninth inning. So there's one down. Yeah, I got strikeout number four for Tony Feo. Here's Clapper Rich batting for the first time. A ball and no strikes. Now we got a sun splash afternoon here in Tempe, Arizona. Here's a shot out in the center field, and this ball is going to drop in for a hit. Tenth hit of the day for the Grays. So a one-out single. Now Michael Crane, as the runner goes, here's a throw down to second, and did he get the tag down? Yes, he did. That is the first caught stealing of the contest. They were nine of nine in attempts until there. So there's two down here in the inning. The wind's starting to kick up once again. And I'm telling you, that breeze is really chilly. We started out our game time temperature back at 1235 was 57 degrees. 6-5 Grays, two out, nobody on here in the ninth. Chopper to third, and he's got it. High throw, pulled him off the bag, and they still called him out. And now the umpire, I think, just signaled that the tag was actually made, and that will be that. So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Grays, who have led most of the game, will take a 6-5 lead into the bottom of the ninth. Jeff Lowry back here from Tempe Diablo Stadium. Alex Gonzalez, three innings of pitching. Now in his fourth inning of work in relief of Diaz. And all he has done is literally shut the door. He's given up one hit. He has struck out four. Came in in the sixth inning. 
And now we'll try to save it as the Grays cling to a one-run lead, bottom of the ninth inning. Joe Ono will be the first batter. Bottom of the ninth inning, and the first batter takes a strike on the outside corner. And it's Gonzalez game to win. He would be the winning pitcher. And the delivery, and not a bad looking pitch. Two balls, one strike. Joe Ona, a single. He has popped up the shortstop in two tries. And fastball knee high. Boy, he's, he is really bringing it. I think he's one of the hardest throwers that I've seen in this tournament so far. And did not get the call. Three and two the count. Gonzalez not happy with our home plate umpire. That was a borderline pitch. He's got a better view of it than we do up here. Three, two. And strike three called. He got him. So the first out via the strikeout as we check it again. Strikeout number five. Now Tommy Priolo takes the first pitch way outside ball one. That is five strikeouts in two and two-thirds innings so far over four a four-inning span for Alex Gonzalez. So one down here in the bottom of the ninth inning, and he blew it by him. A big fastball. Tony was very tardy on it. He's throwing in the 80s. There's no doubt about that. 35 cactus, 6'5 grays, and here's a high can of corn on the infield. And the shortstop is there. Two down. So Dan Skog played a, a very solid shortstop here today. So there's two down, and the last hope is Lee Smith, Jr. First pitch is low, ball one, good fastball. Gonzalez has set down seven in a row and nine of the ten that he has faced since he came in with two out in the sixth inning. So Lee Smith, Jr., the last hope. He blew it by him, and it's two and one. Here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, the 2-1 to Lee Smith. And a shattered back ground ball shortstop. Dan's up with it, throws off balance. What a play to end the ball game. What a phenomenal play by Dan Skog at shortstop, and this one belongs to the Grays. They hold on and win it 6-5 to five to run their 2022 MSBL World Series record to two wins, two losses, and a tie. What a sensational play by Dan Skoggs. That's our Marucci big play of the day. Mark Gallo, our public address announcer here today, and our final score behind the outstanding pitching of number 88, Alex Gonzalez, and the Grays go to two wins, two losses, and one tie with one game left to go. 
This has been a presentation of APN Sports, Arizona's leader in sports video coverage. Minoka wins it 6-5. to five. So long, everybody.